Thanks for joining us amongst the apple orchards of Alpine Cider in Wandilagong, the beautiful township uh, about 25 minutes ride south of Bright in Victoria's stunning high country. Now we're here to talk to you today about what we need to look at when you're buying a road bike in 2021. So Dave, take it away. Like, What are your thoughts around uh, the important things to consider when buying a road bike? Yeah, so step one, most importantly, figuring out the type of road rider you want to be, the type of roads you want to ride, uh, I believe is is the, the critical first step. You know, that road bikes, there's a lot of different categories for them these days. You've got the flat out, lightweight climbing race bike. You've got the aero racer. You've got the endurance bike. There's now the all road bike. So there's these different categories and they all sort of suit a different rider. So figuring out whether you want to be racing on road climbing in mountains, uh, whether you want to be on perfectly smooth tarmac or on a bit of a mixed surface, all of these factors will play into which style of road bike you go for. Would, you, would you say that things are uh, becoming, I mean, things are becoming increasingly segmented and there's all these categories that didn't exist five years ago or yeah. whatever, when it was basically a race road bike or a endurance road bike. And now there's so many variations of it, but it also kind of strikes me that Road bikes today are a fair bit more accommodating across the different categories as well with wider tire clearance and things like that. Is, is it something that you can kind of get away with a bike that can do a, a number of different things while still sticking to one category? I, I think so. And that was kind of a, a point of this field test that we're, we're here for is that there's all these new all round bikes that claim to be aero and stiff and comfortable and they have wider tire clearance than before. and I think that's suddenly happening is there's this convergence of the categories. Uh, so in that sense, you can get a race bike that will still let you ride some gravel and still let you be comfortable. Uh, but at the same time, that style of all-rounder might have a different fit, a more aggressive feel than uh, say a more all-road bike, which might be a little bit more relaxed and longer in its wheelbase and a bit slower in its handling. I think there are still some differences there. So we're talking about all these different styles of road bikes and I think one real useful way to tell them apart is the trail figure. Uh, the trail figure, the shorter the trail figure, generally the quicker the handling of the bike is going to be. The longer the trail figure, the more subdued, the more relaxed things are going to be. And that's certainly something that you can look at when you're shopping for a bike. You'll find that the all road bikes will typically have a longer trail figure, a racing bike, shorter trail figure. So yeah, it, it can be a way that you can sort of decipher through and figure out a bike for you. And tie width certainly uh, adds, adds a, a lot of variation or like a lot of capability to those different road bikes as well. So, you know, that just being able to squeeze different tires in all of a sudden helps them blur those categories where it may be set up for one specific reason, but the tie width will help, help it uh, yeah, step, step across other categories as well. Yeah, and that's certainly a trend we're now seeing, uh, especially in the endurance side of things. Like you've got the Trek Demano, you've got the, the Civello Caledonia. Uh, these bikes are letting you put what was previously a gravel sized tire into the frame. You know, they can fit a 35 or, or more in some cases. So it wasn't that long ago that that was a gravel bike. Uh, so yeah, there's plenty of versatility on offer here. Uh, and it's a matter of working out that if you do want to ride these mixed surfaces, then I think you should be looking toward a bike that ac can accommodate such a wide tire. And if all you want to do is stick to perfectly well kept, groomed and maintained tarmac roads and just chase those bends, then perhaps you don't need that feature. Okay, so step one is really considering the terrain. What would you say the second step is then? I think it's budget. I think budget just, uh, there's a lot of subcategories to this, but uh, I think budget defines so much when you're looking at a road bike. So, I mean, the, the biggest one is whether you're looking at carbon fiber versus aluminum uh, or even steel or titanium. Uh, you know, your budget will play a huge factor in that. Uh, I think some people, you know, you might chase carbon fiber because it, it can be more comfortable, it can be lighter, but I I think you have to spend a certain amount before that happens and at a certain point aluminium just makes more sense. Also I guess the group set uh, that you're choosing can have a big sway, a, a couple of thousand dollars either way, right? Whether you're going a little bit lower end or, or heading up towards the, the upper end of group sets. So when I was working in a bike shop as a little nipper, people would often come in and they'd define their purchase not so much by the frame but more by what was hanging off it yeah. you'd talk about bikes as being like I, I want a bike with shimano i'll take it before you're talking about the frame material or yeah. um, the geometry or anything like that 
to what extent is the the frame the defining feature of the purchase versus the componentry? How do you kind of weight those things? Frame is the is the base to the whole bike, right? So if the frame's no good, the whole bike's no good. You know, you got to make sure that that frame is is suitable to your needs and is as good as possible that it will survive as a bike, right? And and that you won't want to upgrade the key component of the bike, the, the center of the bike. For me, the the components that hang hang off of it, the the group set, those are those are wear items. You know, eventually you can replace them. They're not overly costly to replace. Uh, for me, after the frame, I'd be looking at the wheels as the as the biggest priority. Uh, I think the wheels is will will play a huge factor in how the bike rides, how it how it survives, and uh, you know the performance that it provides. Um, and so yeah, I think invest in the frame, invest in the wheels, group set should come third. And it should be worth mentioning that the, the group set these days, like if you use Shimano as an example, 105 is is fantastic compared to what Tiagra. it was. Oh, well, <laughs> like, let's, Tiagra, like yeah. I rode that for the first time this weekend after I don't know how many years and I was pretty impressed. Mm. It's, an, it's an amazing group set for the price. Yeah. So yeah, Tiagra is basically just where Altegra was maybe five years ago, you know, in terms of the performance it's offering. Yes, it's heavier. Yes, it has one less gear in the back, but in terms of the, the shift quality, it's really, really good. Uh, so yeah, th and that just proves the point, which is it doesn't really matter. Like you don't need to spend the money to upgrade from 105 to Altegra if it comes at the cost of the frame. You know, Spend the money on the frame, get the better frame, make sure it fits you, get as good of a wheel as possible. And then at that point, the components just ride a lot once you wear them out. You can replace them. You can upgrade them. So you would trade you would trade uh, a wheel set for for group set. I would. I would. Uh, especially, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated though because there's then say you know at a, at a certain point you you reach in the price range you get some mechanical versus electronic gearing, that complicates things a little bit more. We'll have a, a completely separate article and a completely separate video on that, uh, so it's worth checking out. But yeah, there are definitely these exceptions to the rules. But I think for the most part, frame and wheels and the shifty bits doesn't, uh, doesn't really affect the outcome of the bike as much. Okay, so we're just talking about group sets and wheel sets. Where, where can we save money in terms of, is there anywhere else in the wheels that you, can, that you need to consider when considering budget? Yeah, I mean, the, the wheels, uh, I guess talking wheels, you've got the rim. Rim brake versus disc brake. It's it's a, still a big topic at the moment. It's been a big topic for a few years now. Uh, it's very clear where the industry is going at the moment. Disc brake. We didn't actually have a rim brake bike at our field test. It's kind of a yeah uh, endangered species. The endangered days. species of road cycling. There are still brands out there offering rim brake bikes, which if you're looking for value to the weight of the bike, I think is still a great option. Personally, I'd say it's a great option if you if you typically live in in more dry regions, not riding in a lot of wet weather. Uh, it's still worth considering, but otherwise, it's it's a disc brake bike that you you're going to be looking at realistically, especially if you're looking at any of the brand new bikes that have come out recently. Uh, the other thing, really big topic in itself, but consumer direct versus local bike shop, uh, traditional channels. Uh, it's it's a it's a much larger topic to discuss. But what do you think there? Ian? I just buy them off the back of a truck. The Consumer Direct really has uh, disrupted the industry though, like it's, it, it's allowing you know, high spec, um, great component bikes at, at a similar price that, that what you would buy, you know, uh, a comparable bike for, like it, it's, uh, so. Yeah, and that's, that's something we found in our field test with the road bikes is it's very difficult to ignore how Canyon is priced and how it's specced compared to the likes of even Giant, which is a very good value brand. So um, it's removing an entire step of the supply it, chain. It is, so it really changes the game, but I think it's really worth pointing out that not everyone should be buying Consumer Direct. I think if you don't know the type of fit of bike that you need and exact sizing or really you know, basic maintenance tasks, I think there's probably value in buying through a local bike shop because those costs will quickly add up if you need to consult a bike fitter or a, a bike mechanic uh, all things that are typically included in the price with a bike that you buy from a bike shop. So certainly worth considering. Um, the other one is new versus used, which is another huge topic. It's, it's worth uh, weighing up, you know, the idea of keeping a warranty and that local support uh, and just knowing the history of the bike as well versus... If, if you're not uh, 
mechanically gifted, maybe it's it's worthwhile buying new because then you you'll know what to be looking yep. or you, you won't know what to be looking for when you're looking at a used bike, the condition of the drivetrain, uh, whether the the wheels are straight or the yeah. rims are worn or... Yeah. O on that quick question for both of you, like used carbon frames, is that a yes or a no for you? Yeah, it's, it's fine as long as you know the rough history of it. Um, you know, it's possible to patch up a, cra a, a former dodgy history of a frame, um, which can be a little worrying, but for the most part, if you, if you know where you're buying it from or, um, yeah, or if you can trust that the bike hasn't been involved in a wreck, then I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, what I would say with buying used is that all the bikes we've been reviewing, we're talking about how the convergence of bikes, the, the widening of tire clearance and how they're all becoming more versatile, chances are if you're buying a used bike, it probably doesn't offer that. Mm. It's probably of an older age, which uh, is probably limited in tire clearance and, and may have a, an older geometry that isn't quite as versatile in its ways. And, and likewise with, uh, with those older bikes, we're looking at rim brakes and, and we've been speaking about those wider tires. and with rim brakes versus disc brakes, there are inherent limitations in that. Yeah. I, I think about the most that you can squeeze in is a 28 or a 32 mil tire on a, a rim brake. And that if, if you're looking for a, a rim brake all road bike, it's a pretty short list it's, to it's consider. Pretty rare. Yeah. Finally on budget, uh, just factor in for additional expenses. So, you know, you've got the bike, all these bikes don't come with pedals. Uh, it's not a complete bike, so you need to budget for the pedals, for bottle cages, for spares. If it's your first bike, you probably need a helmet, shoes. The costs keep increasing. So certainly when you're, when you're looking to buy a bike, just keep those extra costs in mind. Um, yeah, should we jump on to step three? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess we've already discussed uh, the terrain that you need to consider, what sort of terrain you're going to take your bike on. We've obviously just talked about budget. What is that step number three? Step three, I believe, is uh, your fit. So making sure that the bike and the components that are on it are correctly sized and fitted for you, that you're gonna be comfortable on the bike. Uh, and that's perhaps takes you back to step one, which is making sure that the style of bike that you pick is suited to your flexibility, your, the way you're gonna ride it, uh, you know, the reach that you have, um, whether you can hold an aggressive position or whether you do need a more upright position. But it also extends to other factors, uh, including you know, these new integrated cockpits we're seeing. They really complicate it, this story, because you get the bike, it's got a fixed handlebar width, a fixed stem length. It's very expensive to change that. It's very difficult to change that. So some of these things, you might need to consult a local bike shop that has the experience to know exactly what size bike and what size these components should be. Or if you're buying Consumer Direct, it'll probably be a a bike fitter that you'll need to consult and you know that's another cost to consider. You can adapt to uh, certain things but some people are more sensitive to um, particularities in the way that they like their things set up. I'm very sensitive to the way that I have my handlebars and I like them a particular way and um, yeah some people some people will get used to what they have but it's worth uh, considering whether you will. I guess it's also tempting to replicate what you see in the Pro Peloton as well aero bikes, everyone's stretched out, it, it looks looks appealing, it looks looks very mm. pro. You might try it out in the bike shop for five minutes and you can hold that position, but the reality is like, how are you gonna feel after an hour, two hours, three hours out on the road? Yeah. And that's, that's kind of a tricky thing because if you're uh, just test riding a bike at a shop, you're only gonna be on the bike for five minutes and what feels good there won't feel good at four hours into a bike ride. So I, I think it's really important to be realistic about what uh, type of rider you are, uh, what type of riding you're going to be doing, and how your body is capable of uh, handling that. Yeah, being realistic is the key there, isn't it? Mm. It's, a, it's a tricky thing to do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to be pro. Okay, so let's just recap again. So we've got uh, the terrain that you need to consider, the budget, the fit, and what would be step four? Step four is, uh, is kind of a maybe. It's uh, test ride the bike if you can, but 2020 has been an odd year for that. Uh, we're seeing a lot of brands remove their demo fleets just purely out of uh, shortages of, of bike availability. So yeah, test ride the bike if you can, make sure it's comfortable, make sure it fits you well, make sure you actually like how it handles, uh, but also accept the fact that you may not be able to do any of that. And uh, I guess that's where we come in. So you may not be able to access demo bikes. Is there an alternative to demo bikes that you can recommend that, that people might be able to take on? 
Yeah, maybe if you've got a friend with the bike that you're considering, see if, you know, assuming the size is right, you could possibly get a ride on it. But otherwise, it's, it's going to be finding someone you trust of uh, an opinion that you trust, uh, taking on feedback from, you know, people with experience, maybe at the local bike shop or, or the brand you're dealing with to, to lead you in the right direction. So, so yeah, as long as, long as you're sticking with a, a trusted brand or a trusted face at a local bike shop, uh, I think you won't go too wrong. It, it's also worth saying that it's within most bike shops best interest to make sure that people are happy and comfortable on their bikes and uh, and the same for consumer direct brands if you're chatting with somebody from from their customer service team they want people to be happy on their bikes yeah. so I, I think that putting some faith in the process is well placed yes. there you have it how to choose a road bike if you like this content please give us a subscribe there will be a full written version of this video linked in the description below just in case you want more details or you want to check something that we did say. It's been a sunny week and bright. Sadly, it has come to an end, but we'll see you out there.